So what we don't want, we don't want the Fuck, nine, nine. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Once again, the papa is back with some theory on the Lambert or Lambert W function. I'm going to call him Lambert because this channel here evolved into an English channel. I have abandoned my German roots and that's why I'm just saying the English version of his name. And today I would like to talk about the derivative of the Lambert W function and the conditions for when this derivative even exists. So at first I would like to recall what the Lambert W function actually is. So it's denoted by capital W of Z or X whatsoever. And this thing right here is defined as some kind of inverse function, f to the negative one of Z of some function that we are going to call f of Z being equal to Z times e to the Z. So this is just a pure definition of the Lambert W function. Okay, cool. And I would like to derive the derivative today. But how would you go on with something like this? Well, the best way is to consider implicit differentiation. So for this purpose, I would like to plug this Lambert W of Z right into this function of Z right here, because if you know a thing or two about functions, if you apply the function to the inverse function, you are just going to end up with the argument itself. So what we can conclude? We can conclude that F of Lambert of Z is going to evaluate to just Z. But you also have to plug in the Lambert of Z into all those sets right here. So you can also call them X's for example, so you don't confuse yourself. So this is Lambert of Z times E to the Lambert of Z. Okay, nice and cool. And just like I said before, we would like to do implicit differentiation. So that means differentiating both sides with respect to Z, to this argument right here. So let's go ahead and do this. So that also means that dZ differentiated with respect to z is just one. So that was quite easy, but we also have this right hand side. Don't forget this right boy, this right wing boy, Nazi boy, oh goodness, no. Just forget what I just said, never mind. So we've got this right here. And you see, both are functions of z right here, so we need to use the product rule in the first case. So at first I would like to differentiate this left hand side, so we end up with Lambert prime of z, and you see this is indeed just the derivative of Lambert of z. So so that's quite cool, e to the Lambert of z. And now we are going to leave this as it is, so positive Lambert of z. And now we need to differentiate this thing right here, where it stays as it is, but we need to drag this argument down and differentiate it, because we need to use the Chen Lu chain rule, like Dr. Payam would say, or his former professor, I don't care. So Lambert W of z multiplied by it, e to the Lambert of z. And we already came pretty far on that because we can just factor out this term right here, for example, on both. So we end up with Lambert prime of z, e to the Lambert of z, times one plus Lambert of z, being equal to one. Well, and now we can, don't forget your parentheses, we can divide both sides by this whole term right here. We don't want it to be equal to zero. Those are the conditions for this derivative to even exist. We are going to talk about them in a minute. So. That also means that Lambert prime of z is now nothing but 1 over e to the Lambert of z, 1 plus Lambert of z. So cool, 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 coolio, nice and fine, awesome, but we still have this exponential function here if you want to get rid of it to see where this derivative exists a bit better. Well, we can just um, solve for e to the Lambert of z up here, so that means we can also end up with dividing both sides by Lambert of z e to the Lambert of z being nothing but z over Lambert of z. If you plug this in, you end up with a complex fraction, but you can just take the reciprocal because it's multiplicative down here. So finally, we are going to end up with Lambert of z over z times 1 plus Lambert of z being the derivative of the Lambert W function. Okay, cool, cool, that's, that's nice and fine, but Papa had talked about the conditions for um, this derivative to even exist. What are they exactly? Well, this derivative exists only if this thing doesn't have a singularity, you could say. So we don't want to lose this thing right here. We don't want it to explode to infinity. And it would only explode to infinity if Lambert would go to infinity, but we don't want to consider that. But also if this denominator would go to zero. So that means if the denominator is zero, 
that means this whole thing would explode to infinity. We don't want that. Otherwise, the limit wouldn't exist to the derivative. Well, the easiest case to consider is just z being equal to zero. So for this derivative to exist, we don't want z to be element of zero in the first case. But there's also another case to take a look at. And for this, you can consider the uh, Taylor series expansion for this whole thing. I haven't talked about this um, at the moment till now. But you can also take a look at the graphical representation. I've uh, drawn this here. I've went all out for this video. <laughs> and this thing right here is the Lambert W function graph. I just um, opened up uh, Google to take a look at that. <laughs> That's sneaky. And if you take a closer look, this Lambert W function right here kind of um, gets lost at this point. So it changes slope at this point. It just makes a left hand turn, but that's not really nice. So we have to consider two branches. So we have this Lambert knot right here. This is the first branch. And we have this Lambert one being the other branch and where Lambert knot is just the principal branch of this thing. Never mind, not talking about this, but if you take a closer look at this graph, you can also find this out by taking a look at the Taylor series re representation. If z reaches a value of negative one over e, that's at the point negative one. So lambda w of z would reach negative one as its value. And that wouldn't be good because we would have one minus one down here, that's zero, and we would divide by zero. We don't want that. So the second value for z to consider is negative one over e. And well, we don't want it to be element of those things. And if it isn't, then the derivative does indeed exist and we are done. Oh, goodness. Um, I thank you guys for watching. I hope you did enjoy this little video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the description. I'm doing all this stuff in my free time, so I would highly appreciate some support from you guys. And up until the next video, this time I'm going to find something cool. Uh, it's, it's still bloody dusty down here. Here, take a look at that. That's for, uh, heaven, I, X, day. <laughs> See ya.